So, welcome to trigonometry. This is directed towards Math 30-1. Now, before we jump into Math 30-1, um, Math, we're going to do a bit of a review. Um, and there's a lot to review before Math 30-1. So this will be pretty quick. This is stuff you should have learned in Math 20-1. Um, so if anything that comes up you feel a little confused about, or a little uncertain, you definitely have to maybe ask for additional resources, or if there's additional resources posted online, please see that. So things to put note before even starting this trig unit. Um, you should know how to approach it. I, it's really important to understand, and this kind of goes for all of math, but really with trigonometry, don't try and memorize. I mean, there will be one thing that we do have to memorize, um, but it can be fairly mm. simple to memorize. Essentially, what you want to do is try and minimize the amount of things you need to memorize. So if you memorize a few things and then understand how to apply them, that's your best bet. Sign convention is very important. So what are the, like in terms of is something positive or something negative? Uh, understanding what reference angles are, terminal angles and standard position. I'll do a little review about that right away. But these are all... Um, things that you have to know from previous courses. Um, if you're retaking the course, uh, then you've probably heard of these things, but if it's been a while um, and you haven't done math in quite a bit or it's just completely erased from your brain, you definitely need to look up some things about this. Um, practice questions and understand every step. So sometimes you're able to get the correct answer in a, a particular type of question, but if you're not 100%, uh, if you're not 100% uh, sure why it worked, you got to ask questions, okay? Because in order to go to a different type of question, you need to understand how you actually get the question. Um, it is crucial to understand how and why x-coordinates relate to sine, cos, and tan, okay? So something you're going to learn is we're always talking about the angles here in terms of x and y coordinates because we're always living on a Cartesian plane, which is simply a y-axis and an x-axis. So let's get started here. Let's talk a little bit about reference angles and standard angles. Again, I might go a little fast because this is things that you need to know or have, um, I'm assuming you might have heard of. So a reference angle, a reference angle for an angle in standard position, its reference angle, let's call it angle naught, is an acute angle made by the terminal side and the horizontal axis. Okay, so there was a lot of um, terms there. So first of all, you really already need to understand what a standard angle is. So below, a standard angle is something where the angle's whose vertex is at the origin on our Cartesian plane and whose initial side coincides with the positive x-axis. Essentially, a standard angle is we always have our initial arm being on the x-axis, the positive x-axis, okay? And then you create an angle with something called a terminal arm, okay? And this is the standard angle. So here we can see we've made a standard angle from the positive x-axis all the way to the terminal arm. So this would be your initial arm. And this would be your terminal arm. In this case, this black angle here, this is your um, standard angle. And understand the reference angle of this arm is whatever your terminal arm and the angle that it makes closest to whichever x-axis is closer. So in this case, it's the negative x-axis. In this case, it's the negative x-axis. So we were, if we were to draw a reference angle, this would be the reference angle. Okay. Notice when you are in this quadrant here, your standard angle is your reference angle because this is the closest positive x-axis. Over here, this actually wouldn't be your standard angle, okay? Our standard angle would be this angle. Okay, now some things to note and to understand, okay? When you're talking about angles in standard position, um, you're always talking about the positive angle here, and that's measured from the positive x-axis all the way to the terminal arm. If you measure an angle going clockwise 
okay, this forms a negative angle. So here, this standard angle is probably around 200 degrees. Let's say this is roughly 200 degrees, okay? That means this guy here is somewhere in the negatives, okay? So we could figure that out by taking, and this will make all sense a little later, but if we take 360 and minus 200, that means that this is a negative 160 degree angle, okay? And notice how I put a negative there simply because we're going clockwise. If you go counterclockwise, it is a positive angle. Okay, so there is an information about reference angles and standard angles. Now let's talk a little bit more about reference angle. So again, this is an angle measured between the terminal arm, okay, so that arm that extends, outwards uh, and to the nearest x-axis. A reference angle will always measure between 0 and 90 degrees. So here you have a bunch of different examples. So here we have our terminal arm. This is our standard angle. And this red angle here, well this is your um, reference angle. And notice, you could find it because something to note is on a Cartesian plane, we often refer to this as zero degrees. This is 90 degrees. This is 180 degrees. This is 270 degrees. And if you go all the way around, we're back at 360 degrees. Okay? So you can find this reference angle that lives in the second quadrant by doing... Um, 180 degrees, subtract your standard angle. Okay, and that's because you're taking all of 180 degrees, taking away this little part, and all you're left with is the reference angle. Over here in quadrant one, okay, so quadrant one is these points, so let's review that. We have quadrant one, quadrant two, quadrant 3, and quadrant 4. You have to understand this, simply naming these things, because sometimes you're going to be told that a solution can only exist in a specific quadrant. Okay, so when you're in quadrant 1, your reference angle is your standard angle. In quadrant 3, if we make our angle all the way around, so again, this is our standard angle here, And let's call this angle S this time. Our reference angle, angle R, is this little portion here, okay? In order to get that, you would simply take um, angle R to equal 100, uh, let's go, our standard angle. In this case, we're gonna subtract 180 degrees. Because remember, this is 180 degrees here. So if we take away this section from our standard angle, well, then you're just left with this little portion of the angle. And finally, when you exist in quadrant four, your reference angle is going to be measured to the positive x-axis because that's the closest x-axis, okay? Again, this is your standard angle here. And this is called angle S. And in order to find the reference angle, well, your reference angle will equal 360 degrees this time, subtract angle S, so your standard angle. And you can understand that because going all the way around is 360 degrees. Well, if we take away the standard angle section, you're just left with the reference angle, okay? So understanding reference angles are very important. Coterminal arms, okay, so these are just angles that have the same terminal arm. So in this case, you can see all of these angles all have the same terminal arm. So we have our standard angle 45 degrees. If you go in the negative direction, you get negative 350 degrees. If you go all the way around once and then add 45 to it, you have 405 degrees. So this equals 360 degrees plus 45, okay? Now, understand that you can make something called a general solution. 
and uh, we'll learn more about this a little later, but say we want to make a general solution for every single angle that, or every single terminal arm that has this angle. Well, in this case, you would do 45 degrees plus a full rotation of 360 degrees, and then I'm going to put an n value here. And n is going to be any integer, okay? So if we apply, sorry, I think I might have used the wrong sign there. Yeah, an integer is actually a z, okay? So we're going to put a little z there. Okay, so this is our integer sign. So remember, an integer is something that can be negative. It can be a negative whole number. So like negative 3, negative 2, negative 1. It can also be 0, 1, 2, 3, and just no decimals. Okay. Now, anytime you plug in the n value there, you get an angle that has the same terminal arm. So let's say like n equals 4. Well, that means we would go full, four full rotations around. So 400 or 45 degrees plus 360 degrees times four. Well, that's gonna be, let's plug that into our calculator here. So 360 times four plus 45, that's 1,485 degrees. Let's just check that one more time. Yep, 1,000. 485 degrees. So that means we would be going around 1, 2, 3, 4, and we would still end up there. So this is our angle of 1,485 degrees. Okay, and you could put negative values. So if you put like a negative 1 there, you're going to get this negative 315 degrees. Okay, so we'll learn more about that later. But that is what a coterminal arm is. Simply angles that all have the same terminal arm. Remember some things about trigonometry. So you have your primary trig ratios. Okay, so you have sine, cos, and tan. So remember so Katoa. Okay, where you have sine equals opposite over hypotenuse, cos equals adjacent over hypotenuse, and tan equals opposite over adjacent. Now you have reciprocal trigonometry functions. Okay, so cosecant, this is also equal to 1 over sine angle, okay? And this is on your uh, formula sheet. Secant is cos angle, or sorry, secant angle equals 1 over cos angle, and then cotan angle is 1 over tan angle. Okay, so essentially you're just flipping the ratios there, as you can see. Some other things to note. You have Pythagoras' theorem to use whenever you're dealing with a right triangle. Okay, so remember, the main important thing about Pythagoras is that C is uh, your hypotenuse. So this is your hypotenuse, C. Something to note, anytime you're dealing with a Cartesian plane, and this happens a lot, and we have a point on your graph, and then you extend a terminal arm, and then you're talking about it in terms of an angle, okay? We usually refer to this as R, okay? And R is always positive. So we'll see that a little bit more. And then you can create a little right triangle anytime you're given a point. So from here to here, this is your X coordinate. From here to here, this is your Y coordinate. So when we talk about Pythagoras, often in trigonometry, we talk about it in terms of um, x squared plus b squared, or sorry, x squared plus y squared equals r squared, okay? And where r is always positive. So that's a lot to kind of review, but you're going to see this a ton. You're going to have some point floating in the Cartesian plane, then you're going to extend a terminal arm, and then you're going to work with it. Okay, so let's move on and do a little review questions here. So use all the above review information to answer the following questions. 
draw 497 degrees in standard angle. So I am a very visual person and lots of people I find uh, really get a good understanding from knowing how to deal with uh, questions when they draw out um, solutions. So something to remember, this is zero degrees. Then we got 360, er, whoa. <laughs> then we got 90 degrees, 180 degrees, and then 270 degrees, and then 360 degrees. So I already know that 497 degrees is already going to be one full rotation around and then some. Okay, so I'm going to draw one full rotation, but I'm not going to end it there. I'm going to keep going. So 360 degrees, this next step here would be 360 plus 90. 360 plus 90 gives us 450 degrees. 450 degrees plus 90, well, that gives us 540 degrees, okay? So it looks like 497 degrees exists somewhere in here, okay? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to extend this and then I'll draw a terminal arm, okay? And it's gonna be roughly in the middle there, 497. So it's just a rough sketch. Somewhere around here is okay. Okay, so this is 497 degrees, okay? Now state the principle and the reference angles for 497 degrees. So a principle angle is the angle that goes along with the standard angle. And then our reference angle, well again, this is the angle measured to the nearest x-axis. And remember, it's between 0 and 90 degrees. <clears throat> okay, so first of all, let's figure out our standard angle here. So if we look at our values, something to recognize, <clears throat> excuse me, is that we want to know essentially what this angle is for our, our principal angle. If we want to know what this angle is, we can view, let's draw a purple, uh, for our purple angle, if we go all the way around, that's 360 degrees. So if we take 497 degrees and subtract 360 degrees, well, we're getting rid of this first little portion. And what you're going to be left with is the um, standard principal angle. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take 497 degrees, subtract 360 degrees, Okay, and then let's pull out a calculator here. So 497 minus 360, that equals 137 degrees. So there is our, our standard angle. So let's draw one more color. Actually, let's redraw. So 137, let's redraw this as accurate as we can here. So let's maybe do it over here. And then we have our angle going up, something like that, there we go. And we have 137 degrees. Perfect. Now we need to know our reference angle. So our reference angle, remember, is measured to the nearest x-axis. So that's gonna be right there. This is our reference angle. In order to determine our reference angle, it's actually gonna be easiest to use um, our principal angle because what we're going to do is we're just going to figure out and remember that this is 180 degrees. Okay, so we got zero degrees, 90 degrees, 180 degrees, 270 degrees, 360 degrees. So if we know going from here to here, is 180 degrees. Well, if we take 180 degrees and subtract 137 degrees, well, that gets rid of this portion. So all you're left with is the reference angle. So let's do our reference angle will be 180 degrees, subtract 137 degrees. And that's going to be 
43 degrees. Done, and there's our reference angle. Okay? Now, list one positive and one negative angle coterminal with 497 degrees. So, <clears throat> what we can do here is technically 137 degrees would be coterminal. Because remember, coterminal simply just means any angles that have the same existing terminal arm. Okay? You could do 137 and add 360. So what you're going to do is you're going to go here and then go full rotation around, and then you'll just have an angle going all the way around once. So that'll be 137 plus 360. So that gives me 497. Okay? We could take 137 and add 360 and go around twice. So we'll go here and then make a full rotation and make a full rotation again. So let's see what that is. So that will be 857 degrees. So there, we have listed actually two positive coterminal angles with 497 degrees. Let's maybe list our negative values. So what I would do is I would take 137 degrees and I would subtract 360 degrees n. So remember, when you subtract or you have a negative angle, you go in the um, you go in the clockwise position. So we would start here and then we'd actually take a full rotation around going clockwise. So we go this way and we can figure out what that angle is. So I'm going to do 137 minus 360 degrees times uh, 1. So let's figure out what that is. So that's negative 223. And just so we can visualize a little bit easier, if we draw out what this would look like, I need that to be straight. Okay, that's about as good as we're gonna get it. Let's draw our angle here. So negative 223 degrees, well, that would be this angle here. So see how we're going in clockwise, pos or clockwise position. So there are some co-terminal angles. Now, this is what we're talking about general solutions. So state all angles co-terminal with 497 degrees. Well, you can kind of see a pattern here. You're always just adding a full rotation. You might be subtracting a full rotation or adding a full rotation. So what we're gonna end up doing is this is also known as a general solution. So I will take 497 degrees, and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add 360 degrees, and I'm gonna put an N value there. And what that N value is, is this N value includes all integers. Okay. So from there, this means that they can be positive or negative full numbers, okay? So from here, understand and remember that Z, this includes like any numbers smaller than negative three and then negative three, negative two, negative one, zero, one, two, three. So hopefully you can see you just can't have a positive value there, okay? So that is what our N value is. Okay, <clears throat> now moving forward, now moving forward, we're going to um, recall the cast rule. So remember, what you're going to end up doing a ton in Math 30-1 is you're going to draw a really quick um, uh, Cartesian plane where you have x and y coordinates. And you're going to often 
have some point floating in space. So let's call this point X and Y. And then you're going to have to figure out a bunch of things that have to do with angles there, okay? So you would create a terminal arm, so you have a standard angle, and then you have a reference angle, and you'd use that reference angle in order to figure things out about the standard angle, okay? So you would be able to create a really quick illustration of what this looks like. So this would be X, and this would be Y here, and remember we note this as R, the hypotenuse. Okay, so you have a bunch of things going on here where you have x squared plus y squared equals r squared. Okay, and then you can create the trig ratios for like sine angle s. You can create the trig ratios using the reference angle. So this would be sine, which is opposite over hypotenuse. Opposite is y over r, so on and so forth. Cos angle standard would be your, you can use your reference angle in order to figure out that ratio. And remember, cos is adjacent over hypotenuse, so that's x over r. And recognize something here. Uh, let's maybe do tan just to finish it off here. So tan angle, so if you were trying to figure out the ratio for your standard angle in tan, you would use your standard angle. And your tan is opposite over adjacent. It's TOA. So opposite would be Y over X. And now notice something. If we're talking about it in the in quadrant two here, well, your Y value, that's a positive value. Your X value is negative because it's in the negative X axis. And remember, R is always positive. So what does that mean for our ratios here? Well, here, our sine angle for our standard angle, it would be a positive number over a positive number. So this is going to be positive in quadrant two. Uh, let's do this. So this here is going to be positive in quadrant two. Okay, and you can see that stated here. This is positive in quadrant two. Now what about our cos that exists in the second quadrant? Well here, this would be a negative number, so the x value is negative over a positive value. So this is going to end up being negative. And we can see that cos is in fact negative. And then our tan for our standard angle would be y over x. Well, for our y value, remember, in quadrant 2, our y value is positive. And then our x value we've stated in quadrant 2 is negative. Okay, so that means you get a negative number. So this is negative in quadrant 2. So the cast rule is a way to remember which trig ratio should be positive and which should be negative. Because it's all going to change because when we go down here, well, then your y value is negative and your x value is negative. So that's going to make cos negative and sine negative. The cast rule, you start down here in quadrant four and you put C-A-S-T. Cast, remember, uh, it tells you what values are positive or what ratios, what trig ratios are positive. So if we look here, ka, or sorry, C is cos is positive. A is all positive. S is sine positive. And T is tan positive. <clears throat> okay, and this is something you would have learned in Math 20-1. But it's a really useful tool to make sure that you have the proper signs. Because remember, the first thing I said right at the beginning, uh, one of the first things I said is your sign convention. It's very important to understand the sign convention. So what I've just all said here is essentially almost summing up Math 20-1 trigonometry. And then from there, we are going to move into arc length and radians. 
So this was a quick little review on uh, definitions, seeing some examples um, for things that you need to know moving forward. Of course, we're gonna you'll get more comfortable as you do more practice problems. Um, but please, please make sure you understand what we've just talked about before moving forward. Have a good day.